Thomas Anderson would go from being a Metacortex employee, a lonely person spending his nights as an internet hacker, to becoming the one. Yet Mr. Anderson was not the only one or anomaly. Five others carried the anomaly's code before him. Who were they? What were they like? What did they face? And what did they do? What if it is the one who creates the manipulation system for their successor? Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. The creation of the anomaly was the result of adding choice to the equation. As I was saying, she stumbled upon a solution whereby nearly 99% of all test subjects accepted the program as long as they were given a choice, even if they were only aware of the choice at a near unconscious level. For this reason, a strategy was created to control the anomaly. However, this strategy or plan did not appear out of thin air. They were the result of the machine's interactions with the first anomaly. This brings us to the first official Matrix simulation. After the failures that were the Paradise and Nightmare Matrix, the Oracle suggested adding the element of choice. The fact that 99% of the subjects connected to the simulation accepted this facade after the inclusion of choice must have come as a surprise for the architect, and that 1% of humans who woke up would be removed from the Matrix and reused. It was a time that the equation was working at its most efficient, though something unprecedented happened. The anomaly was born and began to destroy the system. For some unknown reason, adding choice to the equation caused this unexpected effect, the emergence of a dangerous rogue code. The first anomaly almost led to the collapse of the first official simulation. It forever changed the paradigm of the Matrix. Perhaps this is why the architect begins to count the simulations from the first appearance of the anomaly, since it was an important event. We believe that the first anomaly was so destructive that it endangered everyone and everything. It was thought to be impossible to contain. Yet somehow the machines managed to stop the first anomaly by trapping it inside a human body. From that moment on, every time the anomaly was to manifest itself, the machines would deposit it into a human, making it possible to be controlled. The first anomaly to manifest must have been something akin to Agent Smith in Matrix Revolutions, a program without empathy that only seeks to destroy. Things begin to make sense when you look at them from that perspective. The creation of the plan to control the anomaly was the result of a near-apocalyptic confrontation. Thus, a system was put in place to prevent the anomaly's rampage, and this system was used against the four anomalies before Neo. The first step in controlling this anomaly is to trap the code inside a human. Step two is to extract this human from the simulation and send it out into the real world so that it can interact with the humans of Zion. Step three is to trick the humans of Zion to believe that he is some kind of mythological savior. And step four, strengthen the bond between the anomaly and the humans. This emotional attachment will prevent the anomaly from becoming destructive and can easily be guided towards the architect. The anomaly will return to the source, and the human who carried the code will have to choose the new inhabitants of the new Zion. This was the path of the ones before Neo, but there is a tragic revelation here, and that is that Neo's predecessor knew the secret of the Matrix. The one before Neo knew that the fifth Zion was destroyed, and he did nothing to stop the cycle. Instead, he perpetuated the cycle, the one became a tool of the machines. He did not warn the new generation of Zion out of fear that the machines would extinguish the human race. Neo's predecessor freed people from the Matrix using his powers to convince them that there is hope for freedom, helping them create the foundation of the new Zion, knowing that everything was a lie. The anomaly became an agent of the machines and the most important asset to the deception of humanity. It was turned into a form of controlled dissidence. The irony is that the one is who must choose which humans to repopulate Zion. It is a way for the machines to make sure that the next anomaly creates empathy for those humans. In other words, it is the one who is responsible for creating the lie in which his successor will be imprisoned in. When Morpheus spoke of Neo's predecessor, he spoke of him as a legend, 
a kind of savior who freed the first citizens of Zion. When the Matrix was first built, there was a man born inside who had the ability to change whatever he wanted, to remake the Matrix as he saw fit. It was he who freed the first of us, taught us the truth. But the man couldn't have been further from the truth. The truth is, there has never been a savior. However, Neo changed that. His love for Trinity changed the paradigm, choosing her over humanity. Neo did not become the creator of his successor's prison. He became the savior that was needed. A savior who was no longer a myth created to control the anomaly, but a savior who stopped the anomaly from destroying everything. The Matrix is a story of a constant struggle against a systematic error, but this error is slowly eluding everyone's control. But there is a possibility that no one seems to consider. What if the anomaly was purposely created? What if the Oracle knew that by adding choice to the equation would result in the emergence of a systematic anomaly? Perhaps the anomaly was not a system failure after all. The Oracle might have intended to create an error in the system to unbalance the equation. It is her purpose after all. She said so herself. What's your purpose? To unbalance it. Her purpose makes more sense if she indeed created the anomaly. But why? Why would the Oracle create a systematic error or code capable of destroying reality itself? The Oracle is depicted as a character who wishes to change the status quo, and adding small alterations to the system's equation wasn't enough. Not only did the intuitive program create the anomaly, but also the myth of the savior to contain the said anomaly. There are two possible explanations as to why the Oracle did this. One is that the Oracle determined that the best way to improve the equation was by destroying its current format and rebuild it. Two is that she simply wanted to destroy everything. Her motivations might not have been as altruistic after all. Many fans have left us comments saying that the Oracle was a program that helped humanity. Yet every bad thing that happened in the Matrix can be traced back to her. Her motivations are ambiguous. They are not in favor of either humanity or machines. She created the anomaly and allowed Smith to emerge as a virus. Maybe one day, her motivations will be revealed. Bad news is there's no way if you can really know whether I'm here to help you or not. So it's really up to you. But do you agree? Did the Oracle intentionally create the anomaly? Is the current one responsible for laying the trap for the next one? For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.